Hello, everyone, and welcome. We're going to wait a couple of minutes while more people join. A minute to get your coffee, your water, and get ready. Hello, everybody. Just going to wait a couple of more minutes. We have more people joining as we speak. We'll get started in a couple of minutes. Hi, everybody. As we're waiting for everyone to join, there's more and more people joining. I love this part where the numbers tick up at the bottom of the screen. Feel free to put your name in the chat. Tell everybody where you're from. Um, I think we can't see the rest on the chat. I think it's disabled. So I don't know if the participants can see the chat. <laughs> oh, now we can see it. Thanks. Great. Thanks, Liddy. All right. I think more people are going to be joining as we go. Um, but the numbers have slowed down. So I, I think we'll get going because we have a lot to cover today. Hello, everybody. Good morning or good evening, depending on where you are. Welcome uh, to the global webinar to power up the end of fossil fuels. My name is Sapora Berman, and I am the chair of the Fossil Fuel Nonproliferation Treaty and also the program international program director at Standard Earth. And I'm speaking to you from the unceded territories of the tsleil the Squamish and the Musqueam First Nations here in Vancouver, Canada. It is a bright-eyed 5 a.m. Uh, here in Canada. That's the thing when you do global mobilizations. Everybody gets weird times. Love to know who's here and for you all to get to know each other. Thank you so much for um, those of you who have already put your names in the chat, told us where you're from. Um, let's keep doing that. And feel free uh, to also add to inspire others the top reason of why uh, we need to end fossil fuels fast, fair, and forever. So this September will be a pivotal moment for global action. No matter where you were on this earth, we have all experienced this summer the impact uh, of um, the uh, uh, climate emergency in Canada. Um, we have experienced the worst wildfires in our history. Tens of thousands of people displaced literally millions um, uh, of hectares, um, probably now well over a billion of forests destroyed. And um, 
you know, as we sit in this critical moment in history, it couldn't be more important for us to gather, to remind our elected decision makers that they have the power to act. We know that we have the technology today to act. We know that we have the financial capability. And what we're missing is the political courage to push back against the fossil fuel industry. People like especially the industry invested interests like to make this super complicated. But 90% of the carbon trapped in our atmosphere comes from three things, oil, gas, and coal. And especially the wealthy countries like my own, Canada and also the US, the UK, Norway, Australia, are dramatically expanding production of oil, gas, and coal at the exact moment in history when we know we need to stop expansion and wind it down. So we're here today to direct the world's attention uh, to um, the Climate Ambition Summit, uh, to, to Climate Week, to the Climate Emergency, and redefine our path toward a safer, healthier, healthier and more just future without oil, gas, and coal. Doing that, we know today, will save lives. So now's the time for countries to commit true leadership by committing to phase out fossil fuels, to stop the expansion and manage a wind down in a way that's equitable, in a way that's fast, that's fair and forever. So the global climate movement is taking to the streets to call for this phase out of fossil fuels um, and a doubling down on renewable energy. There's little more than a week to go before the global days of action to end fossil fuels on September 15th to 16th and the huge march in New York planned on September 17th. That's why we've gathered here today with an amazing panel of speakers um, to talk about the efforts underway and planned by civil society so that we have a strong and vocal presence in New York and around the world, that we make sure world leaders hear this call and we're able to amplify that and especially to support those in frontline communities and indigenous communities who are out there fighting these destructive projects, who are destroying their territories, threatening uh, their water, our air, and our shared climate. So we have an incredible uh, lineup of speakers. Please, if you have any questions, use the Q&A tool at the bottom of your screen. We're gonna try and make sure that we save at least 15 minutes uh, to have some questions from our incredible panel. And I'll ask the panelists to try and try and keep your comments uh, tight in the beginning to about five minutes each. And if we do that, we'll have some time for discussion. Um, so first up, we have Lydia Napsel introducing the mobilization. I mean, you all around the world um, know Liddy, uh, one of my inspirations and heroes for many years. Liddy is the coordinator of the Asian People's Movement on Debt and Development, member organization of Glo Global Campaign to Demand Climate Justice. Liddy. So why end fossil fuels fast, fair, and forever? And why now? Why is this such an important moment? Liddy, we can't hear you. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so you'd think that after many years of Zooms, you'd get used to this mute, unmute. But anyway, so it's very important, I think, to begin to, uh, to acknowledge that we have been fighting fossil fuels for many, many years. And, you know, in, in recognition of the fights of many communities and people's organizations and movements, some for decades actually, um, maybe 20, 30 years ago, the immediate uh, impetus for fighting the fossil fuel projects wasn't about the climate, because we do all know that even setting aside the climate, fossil fuel energy, controlling these fossil fuel projects are not known to be actually uh, for upholding and respecting human rights of their workers, of the communities surrounding them, and have been utterly in disregard of the environmental uh, impacts. But in the last, I would say, 15 to 20 years, there is now an additional layer and a strong layer of urgency in this fight, because we are not just fighting for the welfare of the local communities and the people around these fossil fuel projects, but the entire uh, health and well-being of people around the world and the planet itself is at stake. And we've seen this in many places, not just in the global south, as you, Chapora, was talking about the fires in Canada. And while we were 
witnessing it, it through media, it was just horrifying and bringing tears to our eyes because, you know, this, this is not, it's not uh, making any exception for any people. It's the, the horrifying impacts of the climate crisis are being felt everywhere. And of course, the scientists are telling us that the increase in the impacts, in the, in the escalation of the climate crisis is geometric. It's not just simply increasing, it's increasing in geometric proportions. And in many places around the world, they don't need the scientists to tell them that because they actually live this, live this reality. So early this year, uh, we gathered uh, in well, actually several meetings where there were international networks involving social movements and campaigns in the global south and in the global north, where we reached. This is the uh, battle cry. We need to escalate this fight because not just is are the climate impacts intensifying, the crisis intensifying. We've seen in recent months, governments are backtracking from their already very weak targets and commitments for the fossil fuel phase out. And they've used so many justifications for this, including, for instance, the invasion of Russia, of the Ukraine and the what that did to the global energy markets. We've also seen an increased uh, promotion of false solutions that will delay this phase out and extend the life of fossil fuel energy projects. So many justifications for, you know, a very uh, clear signal that they're going to expand production of fossil fuels and not draw down the production of fossil fuels. So it's really, making the world even more way off track to achieving what the governments agreed to as the goal of keeping temperature rise below 1.5 degrees. So we've been working hard, campaigning hard. We've been coordinating with each other. That is true. But we can still do more. We can still do more to level up our efforts, to coordinate strongly, to synergize, and to strategize much better so that our impacts can compel this the, the world, the governments, especially elites and corporations, that we need to do this rapidly. But not just rapidly, and that is why we're saying it has to be fast, fair, and forever, because it the as you said, Japora, equity and justice should be at the heart of this process. And we're saying it's important not just because it's important for people, it is so vitally so. But if it's not going to be equitable and just, it's not going to succeed. So it's also terribly important for it to succeed, to make it equitable and just. So that's why one, our banner call is not just fast. It also has to be fair. And then also forever, no backtracking. We need to rebuild our society so that we can have what some would call post-carbon economies and post-carbon societies. It's not just important to say low carbon now. We need to reach real zero carbon emissions or greenhouse gas emissions uh, before or by 2050. And now I'm just coming on to why September is a very important moment. You, we know that there are several international gatherings, actually not just what will happen in New York. There's also regional gatherings in the lead up to this moment. I believe the African Climate Summit is taking place or... Uh, just took place. And now we're going to have in a, a week and a half, the UN General Assembly. And the UN Secretary General has also called for a climate summit to raise ambition. And we hope that the call, not just for ambition, but for justice and equity will be equally as strong coming from the office of the UN Secretary General. So this is a good moment to remind the governments and the corporations who will also be gathering you know, they're always uh, taking advantage of this uh, international moments gathering of governments to even have stronger influence if they were not already influencing from uh, behind and so on to influence the outcomes and make sure the outcomes uh, favor their interests and not necessarily the interests of the people and the planet. So we come around uh, around six demands, six messages. I'm sure the speakers will be addressing this no new fossil fuels, a rapid, just, and equitable phase out, new commitments for international cooperation, stopping greenwashing and false solutions, 
holding polluters to account for the damage they've caused and ending fossil fuel corporate capture. So in our part of the world, in Asia, where it's late night now, we are mobilizing in several countries, in several cities, in several countries, so multiple cities in multiple countries, uh, anywhere from a few hundred to a few thousand mobilizations. We're doing this on September 15, uh, because our call now is for mobilizations from September 15 to 17. And we hope that we will be able to have a small delegation of our leaders also join the march in New York on September 17. So we are really gearing up for this. In Asia, we're fighting off false solutions, the expansion of gas. We're about to take on oil as a regional wide fight too. And of course, we've been fighting coal for many years. And I just want to also say we acknowledge our gains and victories. We are not, we haven't won enough, but we certainly have proven that collective action can bring about results. Thanks. And I hope I kept within the time. I just kept talking. Thank you, Chevora. Thank you so much, Lydia. I have no idea whether you kept on the time because I was mesmerized. Um, you, you covered you covered so so much there, and and I think it, the the whole idea um, that we have been organizing, we we have had impact, but um, but we can still do more, and we have to do more is um, is is why we're here today, and and so inspired um, by everything you've been doing, um, and by your um, uh, call to us to remember um, that we're those who have been fighting fossil fuels for years, and when we march. Uh, next week, we march, um, we march behind um, all of those incredible people on the front lines who have been fighting fossil fuels for years. Um, we have uh, next up Mohammed Laman Sadkan, um, who will give us a sense of um, what can we uh, achieve this year. Um, Mohammed is the head of Building Power Department at the Climate Action Network. Over to you. Thank you, Sabora. Um um good evening from nairobi kenya um we are been supporting the africa climate summit here in nairobi um that can have joined different allies across africa say hello to everybody and thank you so much for joining us today in this um very important um a discussion on this very critical work that we've started together uh, civil society on the globe um, trying to fight back against the fossil fuel industry. We'll all be aware that the fossil fuel industry have launched a war against humanity and planet, and we cannot fold our hands um, not to fight back against the horrible advancement of the fossil fuel in industry on all of us. The fossil fuels advancement or industry in itself um, causes numerous violations of rights. So it inherently violates human rights in all forms, in all aspects. And that we need to challenge. Science is very clear that the world need to rapidly move and transition to an effective, fair, but universe uh, energy system based on clean energy sources that produce respect to nature and as well rights of people, especially the indigenous people and local communities. It is clear that the real causes of climate crisis have been the major polluters and the bigger polluters who have been refusing to transition and to stop the dangerous harms that they are causing to humanity and, and planet. That is why it is critical that we all come together as civil society in the world, as citizens of this world, as movements, you know, to fight back for our survival. And that's why it's critical that we need to fight back, not just the fossil fuel industries, but also the funders, the major funders of the fossil fuel industry. It is clear that we need to transition 
to renewable energy for sustainable development for all, but also to uh, drastically um, change the energy system um, that will respect the rights of all. The world have the required mineral resources to support the transition. But major nations and bigger nations, richer nations are refusing to support a division of a just transition to renewable. And that we need to hold them accountable. We need to fight so that um, they can quickly transition. Um, major polluters have refused to pay for all the damages that they have caused to humanity and planet. And that is why we need to push them harder to stop fossil fuel investments, but fast, fair, forever, as Lily have earlier um, put it clearly. Um, this global fight to end fossil fuels, fast, fair, forever, is an opportunity, a campaigning opportunity, a moment for us to build our strong voices together, our powers together, to mobilize our communities, not just in September 15, 16, and 17, but throughout the year, as drumbeat of actions, where communities are taking the front line to bring back or bring out the issues that they are, that they are dealing with. As I speak to you, we have just ended the or witnessed the wrap up of the Africa Climate Summit uh, with a very weak um, outcome paper or declaration that came out of this that did not, you know, strongly you know, bring out the issue of fossil fuel phase out because major, you know, polluters have captured, you know, this space and have influenced some part of the outcome of this, of this summit. But there are critical uh, opportunities and hopes that came out of the, um, the, 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 the summit, the Africa Climate Summit, you know, that Africa have a clear potential to go 100% renewable that it have the African continent hosted over 40% of the world mineral that is required, um, that war requires to, to, tra to transition into renewable energy. So it is clear and evident that the fossil fuel finances, the MDBs, World Bank and others have been continuously not fulfilling their commitment to the Paris argument that they are not, you know, moving from investing in fossil fuels to, to, to renewable. And that's why we also need to hold them accountable in this in this campaign, in this drumbeat of actions, to ensure that um, the issues are, are, are pushed out, uh, pushed out on them on critical um, actions that need to be taken so that they stop financing fossil fuels and invest in renewable. And before the summit in, in, in Kenya, I was interacting and in a conversation with um, a lot of um, climate activists across Africa. One case in Nigeria, in Patakos, the activists were telling us that the oil spirits in Nigeria are actually now affecting the food, um, the, 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 the cassavas, the food crops in, in Nigeria. So when you take out your cassava, you see oil spirits or spirits of oil in your cassava. So that means that the industry, the fossil fuel industries are not just affecting environmental pollution and air pollution, but it's also affecting the survival of the citizens, the survival of the people. The, the food chains have been affected, <clears throat> the water chains have been affected, um, and it is critical for us to really work together and, and fight back against the fossil in, uh, for, for industry. Lady Huff talked about um, the critical demand that we have pulled together as community, as people, as activists, as movements globally to ensure that you know, we push back against all known fossil fuel uh, expansion or in, 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 um, in industries across, across, across the globe. And then you know, it is critical for us to quickly you know, push very hard on a rapid and just equitable trans, um, um, transition. Um, and I push out of a fossil fuel advancement in in all across across board. We also really need to, you know, fight back against all these false solutions 
it have been it carbon carbon credits, it have been it geoengineering, all these false solutions that are not really working for communities. We cannot see our communities being told that they cannot utilize their crops um, due to carbon credits, giving them a small amount of money for survival, and then also controlling their forests. And we all know that you know, the forests are being used as adaptive mechanisms, adaptive spaces where when a crisis of food crisis hits communities, they rely on these you know, wild, wild food, wild crops in, in the forest. But now if they are selling and giving license to polluters, giving their, their forest to them under conditions, uh, economic conditions, it's giving, it's giving a dignity and giving, you know, you know, their, their livelihood to, to, to these communities under this false policy. <coughs> polluters must be held accountable. And it's us as citizens that can hold the polluters accountable. So that is why a global movement is needed. A global community is needed for us to pull our powers together. One thing that is clear, the, the governments listen to the voices of the people. We need to mobilize on media. We also need to create the numbers to hold the um, leaders accountable to quickly transition um, from fossil fuel dangerous um, calamities that are causing on the continent and the globe, but also into um, you know, um, just fair and equitable transition that is needed right now. Thank you. Fantastic. Um, thank you so much, um, Mohammed. Let me. We. Um, I'm going to go uh, quickly to Jean Sue. Jean is the director of Energy Justice Program and senior attorney at the Center for Biological Diversity, and a coordinator of the March in New York City. Jean, can you tell us a little bit about what to expect in New York and what to expect from Biden? Great. Um, so a lot. Here we go. So welcome, everybody. Um, and this is just so amazing to be on a call with people around the world so that, you know, there is such a tapestry of people out there mobilizing to end fossil fuels. This is the power where we all live. And unfortunately, we're on a Zoom call, but I hope everybody feels it. It's amazing. Um, so who's Biden? Good question, Michael Hurst. Uh, so I am um, helping coordinate the New York City March, which is happening uh, on, on the 17th. So in 10 days, we have 10 days to go. Um, and what is this? What is this about? It's about what everybody is talking about. The fact that we have a global moment to seize on to stop fossil fuels. And in the United States, unfortunately, we're in a really bad spot. Um, we have a president who is dramatically expanding fossil fuel production, whether it is in Alaska drilling away at the Willow Project or Alaska LNG Project, or in Appalachia, where there are where there's the Mountain Valley Pipeline that was just greenlit, and indigenous communities and poor communities all across Appalachia in the United States are being harmed. This is a legacy of environmental racism and environmental violence in the United States, especially to Black, Brown, Indigenous, and Asian communities all across the United States. Um, that's a problem. That's a huge problem for President Biden, especially because he came in and touted himself as a climate leader. Uh, he just passed the Inflation Reduction Act, which I'm sure many of you don't know exactly what it is. It's it, many most Americans do not know what it is, uh, and it's been shown that any benefits coming from clean energy uh, deployment through the Inflation Reduction Act will actually be wiped out by the massive amount of production that the United States is doing in terms of its fossil fuels and the massive amounts of environmental injustice that it is de de uh, deploying on communities in the United States. So for years, we have been building up this momentum to actually uh, link fossil fuels with the climate emergency in the United States. And finally, this summer, people in the United States are connecting these dots. And I think it is because of the extremely tragic, tragic fires in Maui, the extremely horrifying deaths that happened in Arizona and all across the Southwest here in the United States, where people literally fell on the concrete in the street and got third degree burns because it was so hot. Um, we have had tremendous tragedies this summer in the United States, and it just is mirrored across the world everywhere from Turkey to China. So um, finally, people are coming together to understand 
understand that fossil fuels equals the climate emergency, the climate emergency equals fossil fuels. Uh, and so we're seizing on this moment uh, where people are making this understanding and they are mobilizing in the thousands to come to New York City in 10 days. Uh, this is all in support of the Climate Ambition Summit for the UN Secretary General, where this is just such an unprecedented moment where we have for the first time the Chief of the United Nations being so explicit that fossil fuels is making our climate burn and that he is asking for heads of state to come to New York City and commit to no new fossil fuel development and to put out credible fossil fuel phase out plans. So our job in the United States is to amplify Secretary Guterres, is to support him and to urge President Biden to step into those doors at the Climate Ambition Summit and actually make those commitments. And we have the possibility to do that in 10 days. So what is happening in New York City is that we have around probably 12 to 15,000 people in the streets. I'm so excited to see many people from the United States on this call and so many people around the world who will probably be in, the, be in New York as well. We need you to show up. We need you to be there in power. If you are bringing uh, 10 friends, that's great. Make sure that each of those people brings another 10 friends. The idea is to show the physical, physical force of people who actually want fossil fuels to stop. We can't let this greenwashing continue in the United States where politicians can say, you know, I'm going to just build more clean energy while still allowing fossil fuels to develop. It's time for President Biden and everybody to understand that he has the legal powers to declare a climate emergency and actually phase out fossil fuels. And the New York City March is to tell him loud and clear that people want this. They want an end to fossil fuels, and they know he has the legal ability to do that. He does not need to rely on Congress to do it. He can do it himself. Um, so, so that is what's happening. And at the front of the march are going to be frontline fossil fuel leaders from across the United States, everywhere from the Gulf South to the Permian Basin, from the site of extraction to the site of refining. All of these communities have been poisoned and they are tired of it. And they are going to be at the front of our march followed by incredible youth leaders uh, around the country and around the world who have been saying for decades now that it is their generation that is going to suffer. So we are welcoming all of you to come out to New York um, and to wherever you are in the world to mobilize, to get out on the streets, to actually give us your photos, those images, because we're going to blast it out in New York um, to show that people in the United States are not alone in their fight, that this is part of our fast, fair, and forever transition. And we wanna make sure that this entire tapestry is absolutely woven together and that people feel that they are together with everybody in the world when we fight against fossil fuels. Thank you. Wow, Jean Su, thank you so much. Your passion is infectious. And I love this vision you've just created of a tapestry. That is so awesome. So that's a little bit of what's happening in New York. We know that organizing is happening around the world. Thank you, Sandra, for inspiring us with 200 actions you noted in the chat in, in, in Germany. Let us know in the chat what you're planning on organizing. Put in links. Let's share them with each other. Let's get inspired with each other about what's happening around the world. So please use that chat function. And if you have specific questions, put them in the Q&A at the bottom. Well, here's a place where organizing really has mattered. And if there's one place that we can learn from this year, of course, it's in Ecuador um, and the incredible uh, Yusuni victory. I'm going to turn now to Ivan uh, Yanez um, from Acción Ecologica uh, in, in, in Ecuador. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Sephora. Uh, good morning, afternoon, and good night to everybody here connected. Uh, well, I, um, I would like to, I am sure that probably the almost 200 people that uh, is uh, now uh, sharing this uh, Zoom call with us, that um, they know that the 20th of August, uh, Ecuador choose um, to keep fossil fuel on the ground in one part of the Amazonia, in Ecuadorian Amazonia. And uh, this is not only important for the local people that lives in this area that uh, has been affected for almost seven years, 
but it is important also for Ecuador because this forces us to go towards a post oil economy. This forces us to go to a, a society which needs to think what we want for our future. And also this is in for, important for the world because I think that shows a really change of paradigm. It's not only a case. I really think that this is probably the most important step in this um, escalation that we are mentioning here that we have to do to fight fossil fuels. And uh, this, is, this is what we used to call now, this is the assumization of the world, the first step. And of course, I think that uh, now, uh, because it was 20 years, as uh, 30 years as Lydia mentioned, of fight, and uh, we probably think, okay, we won. No, we didn't yet, because the government and the oil companies do not want to um, um, accomplish what the mandate of the Ecuadorians uh, ordered the 20th of August. The past two weeks declarations about, oh, we need more than 10 years to do this. Oh, we are not sure if we are going to do this because we don't, we, we can't, we need the money. The same discourse that they have been doing during the two months of campaign. So now is very, very important, is crucial that in all the mobilizations, around this 15th of September and 16th and 17th of September, all the voices show that the Yasuni case is important for the global struggle. With the signs, with the mentions in the discourses, with anything. And if you can um, sh uh, share with, uh, with us in, in the web page that you set up or anything, it, this will be an important voice to show the, to the government, to this government and to the next one, because the 15th of October, we will have a, a new election, the second round for president, so for the new president coming too. So I think that um, just to finish the Yasuni, uh, um, um, let's say case, <laughs> the Yasuni new paradigm, I think that is an opportunity for all the social movements, because this forced us to talk about the ecological debt, the climate debt. This forced us to talk about what is, with quotes, just transition, what means for the societies to go to a power, to a, a path uh, which will be different of a dependence of fossil fuels. And also, I want to say that what means dependency? We have been discussing with Lidl, the other, with Lidl and other people the other day, which is the probably, which are the countries with depends the most because they say, oh, we applaud Ecuador because it depends so much on oil. It's of course we depend, but probably other countries depend more than Ecuador. Like for example, Canada or the US or any Northern country, any capitalist country in the world is depending of extractivism of oil, fossil fuels in general, minerals, etc. So I would like to finish also asking you to be alert because in the next days, probably we are going to ask you not only to share your voices regarding Yasuni in the, in the 15, 16, 17th of September, but probably to ask you to send letters to the government and to the next government too, that um, we are being observed from the world that uh, what uh, is inspiring for everybody must be achieved seriously and in a fast way, in a fair way and forever. Because the idea is that we want to keep fossil fuels there forever. And of course, I would like to ask, to add that we, we, we should be fast, fair forever and furious because we are furious that the oil companies and the governments want to do whatever they want. And this is not fair for the planet and humanity and the, for the non-humans too. So thank you very much for your support. And also thank you very much for what is coming and also the solidarity and everything that can be done in the future. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Yvonne, and congratulations for what, you've achieved, what, what everyone has achieved so far um, in Ecuador. And we will be alert um, to uh, uh, support you and others and make sure 
um, that it's real. And I love that fast, fair, forever, and furious. Um, I want to turn now to um, Eric, Nuj I'm going to say your name wrong, Eric, Eric Nujugana, who I know um, and have been inspired by, of course, many of you have as well, renowned youth climate justice organizer, Fridays for the Future um, uh, MAPA. He's going to tell us a little bit about some of the youth-led uh, mobilizations. Over to you, Eric. Um, thank you so much. Yeah, my name is pronounced Shinjuguna. So Eric Njuguna, it was almost close. It was almost close. Yes. So um, in September, young people across the globe are coming together uh, to demand for climate justice. Um, we are calling for a, a phase out, a rapid, a rapid and equitable phase out of all fossil fuels, and also calling for massive investment in publicly led renewable energy. I come from Kenya a country that has access to um, renewable energy. 80% of our uh, electricity grid is powered by renewable energy. But it is also flaunted as a renewable energy leader. But I believe that Kenya's path is not the pathway that other countries should follow. Um, there is increasing calls for privatization of um, Kenya's renewable energy. And um, independent power producers control around 40% of uh, Kenya's uh, electricity market share. We're not just moving from big oil to big renewables, while it's also replicating the same uh, business models. That, that, that is also the same reality with where this um, renewable energy infrastructure has been constructed on indigenous people's lands who have not consented um, to, to, for their lands to be used for these purposes. And that is why as we move uh, um, to a just and equitable future, we need a principled just and equitable future that prioritizes the rights of indigenous communities that uh, pushes energy as a common good and not a commodity. We must reject the privatization and commodification of renewable energy um, resources from the infrastructure uh, to um, the electricity itself. At the same time, uh, we are joining this uh, mobilizations because there is increasing, there is uh, increasing uh, there is increasing greenwashing and pushing for false solutions. Lamin, who is here in Nairobi, I've been with Lamin uh, during the Africa Climate Summit. And there has been false solutions are taking the center stage from carbon markets to geoengineering. And that is the same with September um, at the UNGA. False solutions like um, carbon markets, um, geoengineering like SRM, marine geoengineering, um, are taking the center stage and uh, derailing and impeding our own uh, capacity to be able to push real solutions that mitigate um, fossil fuels. And uh, that is why we need to reset uh, Africa's development agenda to focus on solutions that actually benefit the communities as opposed to solutions like carbon markets and carbon credits that end up the ticket to pollute um, while it's um, not cutting down on real emissions. And that is why frustrated by the push of uh, false solutions and the lack of action in terms of uh, delivery of the cutting down uh, 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 Eric, I'm sorry, we're not hearing you. It might be that you might want to turn off your video so we can make sure we can hear you better. And lack of finance for just transition, but also lack of finance for adaptation, mitigation, and the loss and damage were being pushed. Um, okay, can you hear me now? Testing. 
I can hear whoever that was. Yeah. Is it better? Testing. Yes. Okay, testing. Testing, can you hear me? When, yes, we can hear that. Um, loss and damage. What did you do? Oh, and uh, the, so what I was saying is that um, because of the frustration, young people are taking to the streets uh, because we have been frustrated by the lack of inaction in terms of delivery of uh, finance for adaptation, uh, mitigation, but also loss and damage. Uh, and also for the, from the push of uh, false solutions like carbon markets, um, geoengineering, this is what is pushing us um, to take to the streets and demand for really just and equitable solutions. And we're inviting all of you guys to join us and be a part of this global and unique moment to demand for justice for communities in the global south disproportionately affected by the impacts of the climate crisis. Thank you. Thank you so much, Eric, and especially that call out to 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 recognize and call out FOSS solutions. We can't go out of the pan and into the fire, literally. We need to make sure that the solutions that our elected decision makers are putting forward um, are benefiting. Uh, uh, communities. I um, want to turn now um, uh, uh, to uh, Kingsley, uh, Kingsley Odago in Nigeria, the National Coordinator and Country Representative for Fridays for the Future Nigeria. Um, uh, Kingsley, you've also been, I think, at the African uh, Climate Summit and, and organizing the Fridays for Future March in Nigeria. Tell us what's planned. Kingsley, I think you're muted. Nope, now you're muted again. We're going to get this. Now we can hear you. Yay. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, uh, Zipora and uh, the, my co-panelists and the rest of the participants. Uh, my name is Kingsley Odogu. Uh, I'm the Fridays for Future Nigeria uh, National Coordinator and also uh, the Climate Life Nigeria uh, country representative. I'm so happy to be a part of this um, call today. Uh, from my busy schedules, I had to make this possible. I was supposed to be uh, somewhere right now, but I'm so happy that, in fact, I'm happy to be with you here because this is where, where I'm supposed to be. I don't supposed to be in the all, uh, other places that I've been invited, but I will make out time and see what I can do. <laughs> okay, I, I don't know if I'm uh, audible enough because uh, since I'm away from my home, yeah, okay, good, good. Since I'm away from my home, it's like my connection is not too good, but I'll, I'll, maybe I'll turn off my video so that you may hear me very well. I don't know if that is allowed. Um, should we I we can hear video? you fine. Oh, oh amazing. We're good. You're amazing. good right now. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, yes, uh, what look at what everyone is saying. Everyone that has spoken here has not said anything different. What everyone has said is, 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 is just a, a true a reflection of the feelings of the people of what is happening uh, uh, globally, globally. And I take a look at the participants in uh, 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 in this uh, call. You see, so many people are here, and that tells you that people are presently worried with what is happening. So, uh, and let me just you know point it out here that uh, Nigeria is happy to be a part of this global mobilization. Uh, to end fossil uh, uh, fuels, because is you all know that Nigeria is a major uh, producer, and and that means we contribute as in uh, Nigeria contributes to the climate crisis. We are living in in, in in crisis globally, and the crisis, you know, keeps escalating. I think that should, that there should be a solution to that, and the people that are supposed to offer a solution to the uh, they, it, it's so disheartening that 
they are the ones that are responsible for the escalation of the crisis. Now, for instance, when someone was speaking, someone made mention of uh, uh, a part of Nigeria, uh, commonly referred to as the Niger Delta region. What he said, uh, the few things he said about uh, uh, Niger uh, Nigeria's uh, Niger Delta region is nothing but the fact. The, 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 the people of Niger Delta, the indigenous people of Niger Delta, they are suffering. They are undergoing pains, excruciating pains, because their farmlands have been destroyed, have been devastated from waste, from these fossil fuel you know, industries over there. Now, and our leaders, our government here, who are supposed to put an end to this, it's so disheartening that they are even a part of this because they are making huge profits from these people and in the fossil fuel industry and those the financial institutions that are you know sponsoring those uh, uh, that are investing hugely on, on on fossil fuels they have destroyed every part of niger delta in the at, at the point that as i speak to you the niger delta people have nowhere to farm their farmlands are destroyed. And even their waters are even contaminated from oil spillages. So what do you expect from the people? What do you, I, I know that the government here has any much reasonable provisions uh, uh, for them just to take care or to pay them any form of compensations. These things is that you collect money from this and uh, uh, fossil fuel industry and uh, uh, the enablers, you just to destroy your own people. What kind of economy uh, uh, is that? Our economy is purely fossil based. And it's so disheartening that all the agreements that have been signed, starting from the Paris Agreement till date, Nigeria has been a part of it. But all those are just lip service. Back home here, nothing is, is, is being implemented. And that is the more reason we are we 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 have we are, we are planning big. We we chose Abuja to be uh, the 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 place for this uh, 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 N4C4 uh, uh, march next week because we no longer want to speak to our leaders in, in uh, from you know uh, 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 hiding. We want to talk to them directly. We want to go to the uh, 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 our national parliament and talk to them that is high time Nigeria transition from fossil fuel you know, energy sources to renewable energy sources. Because this is, 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 is killing us. We, we, are, we, are, we are in pains here. And you, the, you, the, the leaders, you are, you, are, you are doing almost nothing. People are dying. It, last, uh, I think earlier this year, we launched a, uh, a campaign that we called uh, Fossil uh, uh, Free Nigeria. And that was the day we launched the campaign was the day the new the present administration in Nigeria was uh, inaugurated in Abuja at the Ego Square. So we, we, we also used that opportunity. We launched the campaign that day. We spoke to the, 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 the incumbent president of Nigeria who was being sworn in on that day. We, 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 we spoke to him. We showed him our, 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 our banners, our placards. We need an economy that is not fo fossil based. Let us, Nigerians should lead. If there is any country in the world where this campaign should, you know, happen first and happen in a in a more drastic or in a huge way, I think it is Nigeria. Nigeria is supposed to be the country, and that is why we are we are going to Abuja next week. Yes, we are not afraid of their, their intimidation. Yes, we are not afraid of the intimidations, the the, the big uh, polluters. We know that they are not happy with what we are doing, but we cannot we cannot be threatened. We cannot. We are not frightened. We are we, because we are we are we are we are we are determined. We want to save. We want to save our people from 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 these greedy polluters. They, they don't care about our 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 lives. They don't care about our sustenance. They don't care about our families. They don't care about our future. They only care about. The, 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 the profits they are making from their huge investments mm. on fossil fuels. And that is the reason we chose Abuja. Next week we will be there. If they like, let them arrest us. And in fact, we, as I'm talking to you now, our team, because we have delegated a lot of people, 
we are we are mobilizing different organizations that have you know similar vision just like ours to come out in mass and join us we 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 will we will speak to our president next week we will speak to all our law, our lawmakers in abuja yes we mm -hmm. need to transition we need to transition from fossil fuel uh, or econ based economy to renewable energy sources and we need to end fossil fuel now not tomorrow that is why we are a part of this uh, 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 global mobilization to end fossil fuel fast, fair, and forever. It's going to be forever. It's going to be done fast. It's not going to be done maybe in the next uh, century. It's not going to be done maybe in the next uh, a couple of uh, in, in the next decades. It's going to start. It, it will. Ha it needs to happen fast now, and is the time that we need to do this. So we we Absolutely. I see how I am. It, 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 just a reflection of my feeling and the feeling of my people. So I am calling on everyone. You guys are great people. I'm sorry. You if you if you don't see it from the way I'm I'm I'm, I'm seeing it, you will not be in this call today. And I want to sincerely thank a professor. Professor, I I see your great work. You you've been a you've been championing a lot of things. And in fact, we appreciate you and your efforts. We appreciate every one of you here, you guys, you are, you are, you are, you are heroes because you are fighting our future for our dear planet. In fact, we, the entire ecosystem is being threatened. Our environments are being threatened because some set of people want to make money. So instead of people want to, you know, have investments on fossil fuels, nobody wants to trans transition to uh, uh, renewable sources, energy sources, and these things, they know the impacts on our people, but because of their, their greed, their greediness, they don't want to be fair. They don't want to be, be truthful to themselves and to the people that they are leading. So Nigeria is one of the countries that you will notice, you will see as from next week, a huge plot, a, a, a march. It, it's a peaceful march. We've, 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 we've told the police that our, our, our march is a peaceful one. We are not going to uh, 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 do anything political. We are not part of a political organization or party. We are, we are only trying to sensitize our people and our leaders on the need for them, for Nigeria, where I belong to, to transition to renewable energy sources. So next week on the 15th, we shall all assemble in front of uh, Nigeria's um, national uh, parliament uh, and talk to them. We, we will have different uh, kind of presentations. There will be speakers. People are going to uh, speak. There will be a uh, placard display, banner display. There will be performances. All these are tailored to, you know, uh, let make demand, uh, making our leaders see with us the need, urgent need for our country, Nigeria, to transition to renewable energy sources. So I don't want to take much of your time. Fantastic. Just a summary of what we have here. It's just a summary of what we're going to do next week. And uh, thank you one and all for this opportunity. And I'm so glad that uh, I'm a part of this and that Nigeria is a part of this. Thank you and God bless you all. Thank you so much, Kingsley, uh, for your relentless organizing, your determination, your courage, and the fire uh, that you brought uh, to this webinar. Um, uh, we, we need that. I'm really excited to watch the campaign Fossil Free Nigeria um, and, and, and wishing you all the best for that March, um, that you're organizing. Um, I know we're on near the top of the hour. I'm going to ask people if you can stay, um, just for a couple of more minutes. We have two, uh, last speakers that are absolutely incredible. Of course, many of, you know, um, Zaina Kalahaji, who's the, who is the head of organizing and campaigning at 350.org. Uh, um, Zaina, tell us about Power Up. Thank you, Zipporah. Thank you, everybody, for being here um, with us today. I mean, hearing Kingsley, one can just build the furious that Yvonne was speaking about. Um, it's not just furious, it's anger, it's utmost uh, level of anger. Um, as, as everybody has been saying, for the crisis that we have, there are culprits behind this crisis. And these culprits are known. And sadly, these culprits are amassing huge amount of money on the faith of basically 
gaining money and where our planet is burning, where our home are disappearing and where our river are drying out and the food are lefting. I wanna give you one number that I hope gonna give you information and probably gonna build more anger in your head. Exxon, Shell, Total and Chevron among those companies that are amassing this profit on the on expense on our health and environment, gain only this quarter, first quarter of the year, 32, 33.2 billion US dollar, right? First quarter of the year, they got 33.2 billion dollar. Total and Exxon, Excess profit in 2022 was 56 billion US dollar. We've heard our colleague from Africa. This week we had the African summit. There was an appeal to accelerate renewable energy in Africa, not because it's a demand, it's a just demand because the situation is unfair. There are 200 million person in Africa with no access to energy. Energy is a right. Our access to energy means that we have a decent life. We can grow our children. We can grow our economy. These people are prevented from that access on the expense of the profit of the company. That's why we are calling for power up. What we want to do, we want to accelerate the rollout of renewable energy because this is a just demand. This is a fair demand for people in the global south as well in the global north, because we cannot live without access to energy and we need to invest in renewable energy. So the fossil fuel industry need to be taxed to pay that profit that they're amassing on the expense of our health and environment to really put that investment in the right place, put that investment in where it's needed. That's why we are calling for an arc, and I'm calling it an arc of action, arc of pressure, arc of mobilization. Yes, we are all gonna be marching on the 15. Many of us gonna be in 17 in New York and we're gonna rally behind, but we're gonna continue that pressure because as Zipporah said at the beginning, there is a momentum, but decisions are not being made. Every year we go to the COP meeting, the climate negotiation, decisions are not being taken. We want to create an arc from now to the next COP meeting that's going to take place in the end of November in the United Arab Emirates. And we are calling for all of you to come together with us on November 3 and 4 to start demanding and working together for the renewable energy revolution, because we need to get this company to pay for their responsibility, and we need to make sure investment in renewable energy is happening. And it's happening in the right place, because that is justice, that is fairness, and that is basic human right. We all need to have access to energy, renewable energy, clean energy. Please join us for Power Up on the 3rd and 4th of November. Thank you. Fantastic. Uh, thank you, Zaina. Globalpowerup.org, folks, um, that campaign, uh, the links are in the chat. Um, fantastic campaign and what a great way to continue the momentum uh, uh, after uh, next week and the, and, the, and the days of action. Our final speaker, um, again, just on solutions, looking at um, solutions, looking at what we can and what we need to escalate the replacement of fossil fuels uh, with and also uh, how to talk to it. I want to turn to Dave Jones, the Global Insights Leader at Ember, an independent energy think tank. Um, uh, Dave, over to you. Thank you so much uh, for inviting me. I want to talk to you about why we need to not only mobilize against fossil fuels, we also need to mobilize for renewables. Um, which is what Power Up on the 3rd and 4th of November is all about. Every climate and energy model shows the quickest way to cut fossil fuel use is to build renewable electricity. We need to build renewables by 20, triple renewables by 2030 to get us on track for one and a half degrees. Wind and solar produced 12% of the world's electricity last year. By 2030, it needs to be 40% of the world's electricity. 
And of course, that's possible. If we do it alongside better efficiency, it means that by 2035, we can cut, cut global fossil fuel use by two thirds. And that's not fanciful optimism. That's the IEA, say, uh, the International Energy Agency, saying that a two thirds fall in global energy use in a little over a decade is possible. And the most critical part to that is by tripling renewables. The IPCC showed us clearly wind and solar are the biggest and the cheapest tools that we have in the toolbox today. And countries are getting the message. Germany and Greece are planning to build enough renewables to generate over 80% of their electricity by 2030. Netherlands, Denmark, Austria, Portugal are planning for 100% of their electricity to be clean by 2030. And over half of the global renewables is being installed in China. And renewables is the reason why China is already clo uh, close to halting their rise in coal power. Uh, wind, solar and wind are, are cutting coal gas use today, making our electricity clean, but they're also already powering our electric cars. They're cutting our oil use um, through heat pumps, um, um, uh, sorry, cutting our gas use through heat pumps. And in the future, electrification will develop in areas we can't yet have had them. We'll use electricity to make protein, uh, to make uh, proteins, to replace animal farming, to replace uh, um, cotton with fibers, um, to make um, plastics um, out of electricity instead of oil. Electricity will become the preferred source of energy for almost all applications. Um, and it will make fossil fuels redundant. Renewable electricity will help repower our entire fossil economy that we have today. And actually, the proposal from the COP28 presidency now to agree this goal to triple renewables, we need to get governments to support this. That opportunity is on that table now for a very limited period. So why is there hesitancy from governments on renewables? Well, they're facing two problems. First, renewables are competing against lots of other low carbon technologies. Those low carbon technologies like hydrogen and carbon capture are being championed by fossil fuel companies. And they're a dangerous distraction, distraction which takes the oxygen away from renewables. We need to tell governments that renewables is not a solution, but it's the solution. Second, renewables is already becoming a victim of its own success. Building renewables at scale is relatively easy for a few years, but maintaining that year in, year out, um, is really not that easy. And there are already people coming out to campaign to slow down renewables. They're overly worried about land use. They're, over -worried, they're overly worried about costs. Many just don't understand the urgency by which we need to cut emissions. And their, cam their campaigning is working. We need to counter those voices. It's easy to say no to things. We need to say yes to things. We need to focus on building, not just closing. We need yimbyism, not nimbyism. We need to we, we can't keep burning fossil fuels. So we need to fight the problem, that's clear, but we also need to fight for the solution. And renewable electricity is the solution and it needs your help. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dave, I love that. We can't just say no, we also have to say yes. What an incredible powerhouse of, of speakers. Uh, from around the world today. I saw a lot of questions in the Q&A, but also was checking them off and seeing that people were addressing them as they were talking. And we are, of course, uh, a little bit over time. Um, I want to just add one other uh, solution to the mix. Um, many of you uh, have, I hope, uh, heard of uh, the Fossil Fuel Nonproliferation Treaty already officially proposed on the floor of the UN uh, by the Pacific Island Nation of Vanuatu. Uh, last year, followed by Tuvalu uh, at COP27, uh, the fossil fuel treaty calls for a global transition to clean uh, renewable energy and other low carbon solutions. It's insane um, that we're continuing to grow the problem that we have on track. Uh, we're on track now to produce 110% more fossil fuel production, oil, gas, and coal by 2030 than we, the world can ever burn and stay below 1.5 degrees. We need international cooperation if we're going to ensure that the transition away from fossil fuels and a managed decline of fossil fuel production and emissions is equitable. We need countries to actually cooperate on who gets to produce and how much and not leave it up to the markets. If we leave it to the markets, there will be no justice. This proposal for a fossil fuel treaty is gaining um, ground nearly 100 cities, uh, 2,500 civil society organizations, millions of individuals, including Nobel laureates, 3,000 academics, hundreds of indigenous health and youth and faith groups. Um, and now, of course, you may have heard that the state of California endorsed the fossil fuel treaty last week. Thank you um, to Jean Su and IEN and many others uh, who worked on that California initiative. Join us at fossil fuel treaty 
org because we don't just need to stop the fossil fuel expansion in Nigeria, in Ecuador, in Sarawaku, in the Wet'suwet'en territories in northern BC. We need to stop fossil fuel expansion everywhere, and together we are greater uh, than the sum of our parts. Again, thank you so much to everyone from around the world who has joined, who is organizing in your communities, who um, uh, are planning uh, marches uh, and, and actions uh, September 15th to 17th, and then again, organizing around the Global Power Up Day in November. Look, folks, history is made by those who show up. And next week, we will show up. We know that we have the technology, we have the finance, we have the capability to stop the expansion of fossil fuels. We know that renewables are cheaper and safer for our communities. Um, and in fact, will save lives. So what's holding us back? What's holding us back is the power of the fossil fuel industry, the power of vested interest to keep making those obscene profits that Zaina uh, told us about. And, and what, can, what can confront that power is building our own power is making sure that elected officials cannot ignore us, that we are standing up, that we are calling out those false solutions, and together, together we can make sure uh, that they are going to act. Especially with this last summer behind us and what we've witnessed around the world, from the fires sweeping the planet to the heat waves to the floods, no one knows exactly what the future holds. But today, listening to all of you and seeing your plans in the chat, we know who holds it, and it's us. Thank you for all of your organizing, and I look forward to marching in the streets with you in the next 10 days. Take care, everybody, and don't forget, end fossil fuels, use that hashtag, check out the website if you're not sure where to organize in your communities and join us. And thank you so much to all of you for sharing on the panel today, for sharing your knowledge. Thank you. Bye-bye.